Um, I need the slides. Okay. So do you, do you want to say it? Uh, I can just say it. Okay. So um, they created this library that's really really cool. Uh, basically, one of the one of the things that I heard a lot of people complain about Redux is that there's a lot of boilerplate code that you have to write just to get the Redux working. And every time you wanna add you know new new stuff to the Redux, you have to write um, consents, you have to create actions, you have to create reducers, all this stuff. So uh, this library is basically making it very, very simple. Of course, like Sean will describe it better to you. So <laughs> uh, basically, um, um, the title of the, this talk is Redesigning Redux. Intuitively, and, uh, intuitively, developers seem to know a hidden truth. State management seems harder than it needs to be. We aim to persuade you to explore our library Rematch, a popular Redux framework Arc. Finally, we will share our vision of the future of state management in React. Uh, welcome, Sean and Blair. Okay. Now we don't have to do an introduction, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> well, how many guys are tired of seeing talks on state management at your React meetup? That hurts. And how many how many of you guys are tired of seeing us do talks on state management? We did we did one about six months ago with my buddy Scotty here. No hands, so we're okay. All right, let's do it. So I'm I'm Sean, and uh, I'm a full stack developer. I work at Semios on some cool sustainable agritech IoT funky stuff with uh, my, my buddy Blair, <laughs> who also works at Semios on cool stuff as well. I'm a developer, full, uh, full stack developer there as well. And I should mention, there's a link down here for the slides. We'll put on the final slide. So if you want to check it out on your phone or something, it's it's a uh, it's a website. <laughs> right? You gotta push these little arrows, but it's it's a website. Yeah. So first, we're gonna talk about state management. Uh, we're gonna try and demystify the magic of state management. Then we'll talk about a library we made together. And then we'll talk about what we think the future of state management might be and blow your minds in some way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so state management, this funky thing here. Have you ever heard somebody say this? You might not need state management. This is from the horse's mouth here. This is from Dan, Dan Abramov. He wrote a wonderful article telling you not to use this framework <laughs> or most use cases. One of the developers actually I respect the most is uh, TJ Holovichuk, and this is his state library. It's, uh, it's window.object. So maybe you're not a TJ, but maybe you're overthinking state management, right? So what's wrong with this? Let's run with it. Let's, let's do like a little uh, experiment here. So window.state, all right? So we got our state, and we're going to use React. So Make a simple counter, count one, right? But then in React, React, when you want to change something, if I change it to count two, it's it's not going to update, right? So we got to put a little listener on our count, okay? So on change, re-render. So we're doing okay now. But now we kind of got to control that re-render. So maybe we'll like protect our state from mutation. Maybe you can grab it with get state. So, so it's a, but then we got to kind of make a way to send changes in. So there's a great pattern called event sourcing where you send in a change like uh, increment count. So it goes in and then the count would become two. Kind of like, a, like an action sort of. <laughs> and uh, let's keep going with this. What else do we need? Oh, let us, updating the state is so complicated now. It's like this nested crazy object. Maybe we can reduce it down in some way, simpler way. Okay. And you know, uh, it's really hard to debug. Could, uh, could throw some middleware in there. Listen, listen for some changes. And I, I think you know where I'm going with this is that we, yeah, we basically, we basically made Redux. This is what Redux looks like. So you send in some events, there's a pre-hook, changes some state, can't change it directly though. And then there's subscriptions that listen to changes. It's not magic. It's very simple. You can write it in 40 lines of code. 
And actually, all of these state management libraries are essentially the same. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run with this too, okay? So if we take the top three, the top three X's, we got Redux, we got Vuex, however you say that. Someone correct me. Vuex, we got Mobex, State Tree. Uh, so these are three awesome choices, right? And they're all good. Yeah, jQuery is good too. I like jQuery. These ones are all good. Uh, yeah, so if we take the concepts in each one, so each one has a state. Each one has some kind of way to get state. Each one has some way to change state. Each one has some kind of action. They have subscriptions. They have dev tools. They're all awesome. Fantastic. So what is different? There's a few, few differences. So in Redux, we have an immutable state, which means that you have to kind of replace the whole object. You can't really mutate it. And in Redux, you do a kind of equality check for diffing instead of a reactive, observable kind of listener. And there's some differences in how many stores you have and how many view libraries you can work with. But basically, they're all good. They're all about the same. So what's important? When, how do you pick one if they're all good, right? So I think you got to have a framework of how to pick a library. So I, I, I say the purpose of any library is to make something more complicated seem simple for developers because we're simple people right so here's here's my math formula that I, I took from a comment on a medium article i wrote because mine was worse people complain uh so yeah it's how much time it saves you versus how much time it would have spent you to make it yourself right that's how we can determine the quality of a library and the real focus, it should not be what's the fancy schmanciest, most popular. It should be what makes developers productive. So if you're writing less, you're reusing more, you're, it takes you less time to learn what you're doing. It's easy to read and you can change it to fit whatever need you, you want. That's what you want. So I've been on a journey. I've been on a journey through several years of this. So here's my, my state management journey. I started with Flux, and then I was like, oh, it's kind of weird, Reflux, Fluxor. Redux came along, I was very happy. Thunks, I think are, anyway. Uh, I played around with Sagas. I have an app with, with lots of Sagas and Redux offline. And then I found in China, the very popular libraries like Diva and Mir, these are, React Redux frameworks. I was very fascinated by that. But at the end of the day, each one has their own downside and they don't often work with what you want to work with. Like Mir doesn't work with React Native. I do a lot of React Native. So we thought we could make something better because we, uh, we got Scott's ideas and we got Blair's brain. We put it all together. And uh, Blair's going to tell you about Rematch. Thank you, Sean. I don't know, okay, my brain involves not always the best idea sometimes, but uh, they wanted to listen to me sometimes. But uh, yeah, so Rematch is the library we wrote. Um, Sean and myself, a lot of input from Mr. Scott Clayton right there in the front row of center. Um, so what is a Rematch? I think our elevator pitch on it is, it's Redux best practices with a lot less boilerplate. Um, I think that's the best way to sum it up. And we give you like built-in dev tools, um, dev tools you already use. And um, the big thing too is we, it, it's a Redux only framework. It's view agnostic. So we, we took, if you're those are React meetup and I, do, I use React daily, you don't have to use React with it. So um, yeah. So we're open source obviously on GitHub, uh, rematch slash rematch. We have the organization rematch. So that's us. Um, yeah, and I just, to go ahead and reiterate, we're, we're, there's actually nothing too crazy going on here. We're just, wrapping Redux basically with a little bit of a different API that after all months of kind of playing around, Scott, Sean and myself kind of came up with a little bit different API to, to use all the Redux we're familiar with that we feel works a little better for us. And hopefully yourselves as well if you give it a couple minutes to give a shot. Um, 
and, and um, we get a little bit of good feedback online about it. Um, Sean and I were like, should we put these in there? But we we're like, okay, sure. So we got some some good Twitter love. I can't read that, so maybe I'll read it out. One on the left says, Sean Mack, your rematch library just killed so much clutter in my application. State structure, reducer selectors, and effects in one place. I actually love writing my state app again. Thank you, sir, with a heart. And then uh, <laughs> another guy, Ruben, saying, not so often set not so often one steps into something so incredibly brilliant. This library is completely stunning. Rematch, kudos to Sean and Blair. We don't know those people. <laughs> and as devs, we get yelled at all the time, so it's nice when people say nice things. <laughs> um, there's cool. a lot of mean stuff, too. <laughs> yeah, there's, we kind of stopped looking at the hacker news comments. Um, <laughs> um, cool, so I think we'll just run through it. Kind of some quick examples and just give you a tour and it hopefully kind of explains itself. Um, yeah, so getting started is really simple with it. Um, it's just that. That's just caught. Uh, uh, basically, we have the library itself is called Rematch Core, and you import init out of it, and then call init, and that gives you the Redux store. It's nothing crazy going on there. This exact same Redux store you're all familiar with. So if you call get state on it, you get empty object in this case here. And because it's the React Meetup, I assume many of you have been using React Redux, um, the official bindings for uh, uh, React, for Redux. So yeah, basically just plug that store into your provider and you're good to go. Um, the API at the top level is a little bit bigger though. We do, su we do support tons of, of Redux options. So, you know, once you start building real world apps, there's lots of things you need to bring into Redux usually. We provide entry points to all the stuff you, you might need to plug in. So middlewares, enhancers, dev, further dev tool options. What's other React Patron, I think? You can make it look yeah. bad. Um, yeah, but uh, most of the time, um, you don't have to tap into this unless you're doing really complex stuff. Um, cool, so basically, rematch is all about what we're calling models. And this is greatly inspired by my journey through Redux has been very similar to Sean's, that arrow going down, and we kind of fell in love with Mir. You probably, if you guys have been coming to this meetup for a while, we did a talk on Mir six months ago, and we took some of the ideas from them, um, and, but we, Mir was uh, tightly coupled to React, so um, we kind of wanted to pull that out, but we, yeah, a lot of inspiration along our journey, putting all the best pieces together that we liked. Um, so basically, when you write Redux code, you guys are all familiar with these things. You, you got your state, then you've got your action types, you've got action creators, you got reducers. Basically what a model is, it puts all that into one place. Um, so one place, less code, same logic. And uh, to kind of just help drive home what the model is, I'll just do a quick, the easiest example of this is just, usually we have a models.js folder, and a model is just an object, and the minimum you need to give it is a state, which is the initial state. So model A there's the state is hello player another model called model B, that state is hello Sean. If you init um, rematch by importing those models, the get state your store is just two keys, hello Blair, hello Sean. So it helps you kind of visualize what's going on. Nothing crazy behind the scene, but I just kind of want to put that in your head so the following example makes sense here. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll do the classic kind of counter example. Um, ignore that because full screen slide didn't work as I wanted it to. <laughs> um, I don't know why we copied there too. Cool. So the initial state of a counter, of course, is zero. Nice and simple. So if you were to do store.get state, you get your count to zero right there. Um, so let's put some reducers in to change that state. So these reducers look a little bit different than the traditional reducers you've been writing in Redux, vanilla, vanilla Redux pipes uh, out of the box. But we have two reducers. The first one is the simple up reducer, which takes a state, returns a plus one, right? The second one is a, uh, not by, so you can specify the amount the counter goes up by, which is the payload. So the thing you notice about here, there's no action types. What we've done is we've done one reducer for each action. Comparing that with a normal Redux reducer, we're basically just taking out the, the switch statement and putting them into uh, one reducer each, right? So pretty cool stuff. Um, 
after you use that model, so that code you have written there, something really cool happens. Rematch automatically generates action creators with dispatch built in. So with that code there, anywhere else in your app, you can import dispatch and you can dispatch actions um, with that syntax there. So dispatch dot the name of the model and then the reducer name is the name of the action creator. Um, pretty cool. Um, but my favorite part is this next step here. So this is, and this is, you know, your, you show somebody Redux and the quick, how do I learn Redux? This is a quick, easy example, but of course, real world apps, you got API calls, you got asynchronous code, stuff gets complicated, but we baked that into the model as well. You can't read that because my slides screwed up, but that says effects. <laughs> <laughs> um, and effects are functions that talk to the outside world, right? So if you know Redux, you know your reducers are supposed to be pure, right? They only rely on the state parameter coming in and the action type, or in our case, the state and the payload. And that's all it can talk to. It shouldn't be referencing anything else. Well, functions like to talk to the outside world, right? So API calls, calls to dispatch other actions. That's kind of what thunks, I used thunks for previously. Um, yeah. So it kind of follows the same pattern as what the reducers look like. Basically, you give an effect a function. That one's called delayed up by. It takes the payload and we have access to the root state of your app. So that's the entire state tree of Redux. And you can put an async function here. So there's a promise to just delaying a second. And then we've got some shorthand there. This actually references the model so you can call your reducers there. You can call this up by. So delay a second, then, then call your up by reducer. Nice thing about this, for consuming this outside, you call them exactly like the action that you showed previously. So we import dispatch still. So if you count the first two there, which is the normal reducers, right? But the delayed up by, you call it the same way you call your other code. So it's really easy to understand. Um, yeah, so that's, 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 the, that's the basic gist of rematch. It's, the model is like three things, state, reducers, and effects, um, to kind of get you going. And like I mentioned, there's no opinions for the view. You can plug in whatever view layer you like. Amber's a little bit hard, though. <laughs> <laughs> but it plays nice with these guys. Um, I also think, uh, does anybody else realize how much the, the, um, the view logo looks like the Canucks logo? <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. And uh, yeah, so that dispatching, uh, the dispatch we built in, the first line there, you can call it the cool new way, which we've done in rematch, but you can still call, call dispatch the traditional way you're used to in, uh, in Redux. So. Just uh, you can do either or, depends on what you, what you like. Um, so yeah, since this is a React meetup, I thought I'd put a quick React example first. Um, there's kind of two ways you can go about doing this. This is the simplest way, I'd say, which is got a component there, right? Take some props, it's gonna show our counter. So we have props.count shows the value. And then we got a couple buttons to trigger those different action creators that I mentioned in the previous slides. So we got up, up by five, and delayed up by five, right? If you've been using React Redux, you'd, uh, you'd wrap that and connect, pass in your map state, right? So we're passing state.count becomes our count for the, the component there. And at the top there, I'm importing dispatch from rematch core and just injecting it straight in the component there, which is super simple. Like you can just plug it right in the component. I like to do my code this next slide though. Um, the difference being here, is I'm putting the dispatch in in the map dispatch, the second parameter down here for uh, connect. And the reason why we kind of feel that's the best practice way is if you look at the component, it's completely isolated. That's a dumb component that only knows about its props, right? The, uh, the on-click uh, on handlers are just like props that up, props that up by five, props that delay by five, and you use your, your uh, map uh, dispatch to, to plug those in. So yeah, that's how you use it with React. Um, and I guess the last part of rematch is our plugin system with it. Um, you can extend it. You can extend rematch to do lots of cool stuff. Um, and our dirty little secret about rematch is it's actually built in the plugin pipeline. So the dispatch and effects that we meant, I mentioned earlier are actually coded the same way you'd plug your, you'd code your own plugin. Um, so it's a, it's, it's pretty cool and easy to extend. Um, We've got a bunch of plugins already that um, you can use. We have a selectors plugin, which needs a little bit of work. Uh, it's, it's great, but after 
and this is the great thing about open source stuff, you get people using the library, you get some feedback, and this selector's plugin, for example, was written kind of with the idea that people would be having bigger models, but in practice, and myself too, I find that the models I'm writing with Rematch are a lot smaller than I envisioned. So, um, so yeah, so we're, I'm kind of trying out some new ideas for a different selector plugin, but it works great, as is, if we need it. Um, got subscriptions plugin, persist for persistent state, uh, React Navigations for React Native, Sean's been using that one. Um, I was playing on the weekend too, and I wrote a plugin called the Boilerplate plugin, which I wish I kind of had ready for this, but it spits out the code I used to write for Redux with all the switch statements and the action type cons and stuff. Um, yeah, so but using the plugins is really easy. Um, if you refer back to our init model, or sorry, init of, read, of rematch, you basically just bring in the plugin and we take a plugins array and you pass it in. The loading plugin, for example, doesn't take any options this here. It does take options, but if you had options, you can pass it in on the creation of it. Um, and the loading plugin is pretty cool, actually. We, it's inspired by DBA loading, DBA loading, which is whenever any effects are firing in your models, you have a model in your store that tells you if they're firing or not. So you can, it's really easy to hook up, like is loading props onto your components for when you're creating data and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so this is the rest of the plugin API. Basically, we've got all these hooks that tap into the various um, uh, points in what when we is initializing and stuff like that. Um, if you're making your own plugin, this one's called My Cool Plugin. Uh, you have a config which gives you options to merge into the rematch init config. Um, next key is expose. This is kind of like a shared object which you can use to communicate with other plugins. And after that, we've got init, so you can see it takes expose, which means to grab something from other plugins. We've got an on model hook, which is executed every time a model is created. Um, middleware, which you're familiar with in Redux. And we've got a last hook on store created, so when the store is finally created, you can do anything you need to do there. Yeah. So cool, that's rematch. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so we wanted to make a something that's more extendable than Redux and simpler than Redux, like the API we wish Redux had, but got popular too fast. <laughs> so we're looking to the future, and we don't think we have it all yet, but we think we'll have more soon. So a uh, couple things you guys probably have on your minds is, have you seen the new uh, context API for 16.3? Woo! Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, there's three ways to hold state in React. So you can put state in your component, you can pass state to children through props, or there's this thing that hardly anyone uses but is awesome. It's called the context API. So context API, why, does, why don't people use it? Because the docs tell you don't use it. <laughs> because it's, but it's going to be better soon. What it does is it lets you hold state somewhere, and you can have a child that's like a grandchild or great grandchild, and it can still access the state. It doesn't have to be neighbors, right? Is that, is that okay? <laughs> okay, check it out. Yeah, and you've been using a Context API if you have been using Re React Redux because this is how Connect works, right? So Connect hooks up into Redux like so listens to subscriptions, and updates the state in here. Then connect is like this higher order component that shoves, shoves that state into your component. Yeah, so you're used to this. This is what the new API looks like. It's a little bit nicer. You have a provider, and you can give the provider some uh, state. And you can also do a kind of render property thing to your consumers. So the whole pattern is provider, Hold state, consumer consumes state. It looks a lot nicer, it's a lot easier to use. Similar to a library called unstated if you want to do that nowadays. So that sounds pretty great, right? We don't need Redux, we have provider. Uh, yeah, so when you use provider, you're gonna have all these little chunks of state, like little modules for your app. Whereas in Redux, you just have that one. You have the one at the root, usually just one at the root, and 
things can connect to it and grab state from it, right? But this worries me a bit. So when we get a new tool, we're really excited, right? We're like, oh, new tool, new tool. So the pendulum, I think the pendulum's gonna swing more to putting state inside of your view. And there's some downsides to that. There's some upsides, but there's some downsides. So one downside is you don't get all that decoupling. You get like that separation of here's my data over here, and then here's my view over here. You don't get that. And you're stuck with React only when you do this. I, sh I shouldn't say that at a React meetup. <laughs> yeah, well JavaScript, the lifetime of a framework is very short. Uh, you also end up having to move your provider around quite often, right? Because, oh, this needs state over here. So then you're like, okay, here. And it's kind of, kind of makes it more annoying and less developer friendly, in my opinion. So we uh, keep that in your mind and we'll come back to it in a minute. But I'll tell you a little bit about our roadmap for Rematch 1.0 coming up. So step one, Rematch is written in TypeScript, but does not support writing in TypeScript. So this is a weekend project. Number two, uh, we think we can make plugins look a little cleaner if we make them into classes. You know, we don't want to go too functional, where you can add your on model hook or your on store created hook. If it exists, yeah, this would be a nicer API. And finally, step three, we want to support having multiple stores because, for example, at work we have a large application where it's, we want to break it down into different stores, but we want it all to work together and we don't want to have any breaking changes. And this is possible. So here's how it works. So you can have local stores and each one has its own dispatch and get state, but then you have this import dispatch, import get state. And what it does is it dispatches to all of the stores you have. So when you make a store, it goes in an array of stores and you can dispatch to all stores. And when you want to get all of your state, you can get all of the state from all the stores. So you get kind of the best of both worlds. We think that would be a really cool way to work with Redux. Yeah, so think about that bit. Uh, yeah, so just to finish off, I guess, I'm Sean and Blair. Yeah, and we work at, we'll do, we'll do a pitch now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we work at Semios, and it's a really fun place to work. We work with lots of cool people using pretty much whatever technologies we, we uh, decide to use together. And uh, we work on some very cool projects. With, uh, we make tools for scientists, and we make, uh, we, make uh, yeah, we make lots of cool stuff. I don't know, Blair. Do yeah, we do make lots of cool stuff. He also has to work with Scott Clayton. Scott Clayton is the best guy. He's the best. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm, and we're hiring. We need uh, some great devs, so definitely come say hi and talk to us uh, after if you guys are looking for some work. Oh, and last, last meetup, we had about 50 stars, right? And we went around and made some of you give us stars. <laughs> but now, now we have 2,500 stars. So uh, check it out. And if you like it, uh, <laughs> give it, give it a star, but uh, definitely check it out. Uh, rematch slash rematch on GitHub. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Thomas. Uh, who's uh, using rematch? Sean McKay is using rematch. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've had um how many that you know what you know. Oh yeah, one of the first people to use rematch was a, a guy at Expo who makes makes games. His name is Evan Bacon. And uh, if I could put his tweet on there, he would say, Rematch is the bomb. I exclusively use it now, I believe is the exact quote. Uh, but uh, yeah, we use it at work and we we found uh, a lot of people started using it. It's only been popular for about three weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like five years in JavaScript. We didn't. It was a secret. It was a secret, everybody. <laughs> but it's been a, few, a lot of people have been telling us they've been pouring it over. They've been trying to pour it over and, and give it a shot. So 
I think we'll see some people um, make some cool stuff too with it. Yeah, we've had about 10 or so contributors to the repo so far. So it's a promising sign. Any other questions? So, so it's no production ready, or it is? No, we, we use it in production. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And most of the changes have been additional features that people requested. For example, uh, I want two models that can communicate to each other. So you can actually dispatch actions very simply within a mod model and capture from other models. There's been uh, additions to dev tools. So you can add all your action creators on into your dev tools and run them. And, but for the most part, uh, it is Redux, right? If you're using Redux, it's essentially the same. Everybody's shocked. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave you with that. Thank you. Cool. Thanks so much. Hey guys, if anyone is looking for uh, a career change, uh, I'll be here and we can speak with you. <laughs> <laughs>